Good morning, everyone. Leah Dixon here from Port Coquitlam, British Columbia. I am live this morning with my weekly card class to go. And this week I am featuring um, the Ginkgo Branch Bundle and um, pairing it up with a celebration item called Sending Support. And this is a um, one of our celebration stamp sets that you can earn for free with a $60 purchase. So I am going to get started. I'm going to zoom in on my desktop and I'll show you the paper and our stamp set a little bit more closely and then we'll get started crafting. Um, as you pop on, um, I'd love it if you said hi. Let me know that you're here, whether you're watching um, live right now or watching the replay at another time. I'd love to know who's here. So our sending support stamp set is a beautiful stamp set with lots of um, really reassuring sentiments. And this is something that you can earn for free with a $60 purchase right now during celebration. So um, we've got some days are harder than others. I um, hope today is one of the easier ones. Sending loving thoughts and prayers. Um, there are so many ways you might feel right now alone shouldn't be one of them. Here for you always. And then we've got good luck. It's okay not to feel okay. You've got this. My shoulder is yours and courage is being really scared and doing it anyway. So just a really um, nice stamp set, especially this time of year when people, you know, the weather and everything isn't great and people might not be feeling fantastic. Um, and so I'm pairing that up with the Ginkgo Branch that also has some beautiful, some with sympathy, thinking of you, sending hope and peace, and then just a simple friend. Um, so I thought they paired up really, really nicely. And of course, when you purchase the Ginkgo Branch bundle, so that's the stamp set and the dies, and the dies are gorgeous. When you purchase both of those, that's a $72 purchase, which automatically earns you a free celebration item. So I'll just set those off to the side for a moment and I'll show you the paper that we're using on all of our cards. This is the pretty print. So it comes in evening evergreen, blackberry bliss, shaded spruce and calypso coral. And of course you've got two sides to it. So one side is like this beautiful, like great for scrapbooking even because it's not the same across the whole page. And then a beautiful, just, um, I don't know, like a, a blended, page where it's not all just one solid tone and then some really fun spackling um, and then that's in all the colors and then the other side of them is like this really cool like the sun prints um, of ferns and little wispy garden pieces and then a slightly different pattern again with that kind of sun print look and then finally like the dandelion puff sun prints and so it's just such a beautiful paper in all of the colors. Um, and so, yeah, just absolutely lovely. I love this spackle. And then the oh, sun print stands out a bit more on the darker colors. And then my favorite page, I think, on the two darker ones is this kind of beautiful scrapbook page. So really, really nice paper that we're using for today's cards. All right, I'll set that off to the side and let's get crafting. Our first card I was inspired to create because I don't know if you've heard, but our um, Clover Punch from our new mini catalog has actually gone out of stock already and won't be returning. Like it's unorderable forever. It's sold out. Um, so I thought, well, what can I do? for St. Patrick's Day. I don't have many St. Patrick's Day cards that I send out, but I do send out St. Patrick's Day cards. So what can I do? So this was my solution. Um, so in your kit, um, if you do place a $60 order with me, you'll get a kit make and takes to make all the, all of today's cards and you'll get enough stuff to make two of each. Um, so you'll have a piece of thick basic white card stock here. And it has already been die cut with the greenery die. Um, let me just pull that out to show you. So it's, um, sorry, stitched greenery die. It's a full plate. 
and it just creates this stitching across whatever you run it through your stamp and cut and emboss machine with. So it's a really neat one. Um, so we've got that. So your paper will already come stitched with that, but if you love it, you'll want to grab that so you can make more of these. And then we've got our designer series paper and some shaded spruce cardstock. So I'm just going to start by gluing these two pieces together. There we go. All right. And then once we've got those two glued together, I'm actually not going to use liquid glue to attach this to my card front because we're using the stitched greenery on our card front is unlikely, but I'm always worried that the liquid glue is going to seep through that stitching. <laughs> so instead, any dry adhesive would do. Tear and tape, um, seal, seal plus, like whatever you enjoy using. Um, just as a dry adhesive though, so that nothing can seep through that stitching. So with that adhesive on there, I am going to line this up so that we have got a nice border, an equal border on the two sides and the top. All right. So we've got that attached. Now I'm going to take my circles. So I have got here um, a circle from, oh, Got a little scrap of paper there. This circle is from our layering circles. And so we've got regular circles and scalloped circles. And I've paired it up with a circle from our stylish shapes dies. So I kind of liked how we've got stitching and no stitching and they really layer nicely together. Um, so I've got those two. I'm going to glue my stitched one onto my um, layering circle and we'll be good to go. So I'll grab my liquid glue again. And I'm not worried about like, there's no stamping on this. So we're just going ahead and gluing the pieces together. And there we go. And then I am actually going to attach this little guy. So this is one of the ginkgo branch dies in the bundle. I'm going to go ahead and attach him to my circle and I'm going to use mini glue dots to do that. So whenever I use my mini glue dots, I always like to use my take your pick tool as well. Um, so unroll that, find that there. I like to pick it up with my take your pick tool. That way I don't get sticking this all over my fingers and then we just scrunch that up so it falls into that big open space at the bottom of the ginkgo flower or leaf or whatever it is so you could do two or three on here and we'll try and squeeze one into that other spot hi christy oh thank you very much yeah, I just, I like St. Patrick's Day cards, but the punch gone, I didn't get it in time. I was a little slow place in my order, I guess. Um, I thought, what can I do? So here we go. I'm going to place this onto my circle. And then while I've still got this out, my mini glue dots out, I'm going to take a piece of elegant trim, um, a piece of gold elegant trim, and tie a little bow here. So you can then just play with this and just, you know, squiggle it around, reposition it. Oh my goodness. My fingers this morning are not wanting to work. All right. And just keep fiddling with it until it's the size and shape that you want. Oh, there we go. Yep. All right, when it's the size and shape that you want, we're going to take another mini glue dot. Oh, come on. And we're going to kind of squiggle it up so that it falls onto, I actually want it on this side, um, falls onto the knot of the bow you created. 
and then we can place that right onto our card onto that little piece and then i like to use my take your pick tool to really poke that um, mini glue dot into place so that it's firmly behind my knot i don't want to have sticky stuff on the front of my card um, so there we go. So once it's fully behind, then you're not going to have weird things sticking on your card. You can also kind of use it to help with where the trails of this bow land. Like it, you can get them into that sticky stuff and really help position it. Now with that done, those ends are a little bit long, but I always like to cut more so it's easier to make the bow. Um, instead of trying to fiddle with exactly the right size piece and getting frustrated. All right, so we've got that. Now we're going to stamp our sentiment. So I'm gonna grab my shaded spruce ink and I am going to get my sentiment. You don't see it on my desktop. Okay, here we go. So these ones are the rubber, which I really um, I like because they have a really good impression, although our clear ones are really good now too. All right, so now you're going to want to ink this up. Now my shaded spruce is a little bit dry and um, I have ordered a refill, but it has not arrived yet. So I'm actually just going to kind of smush my ink. Oops, use my bone folder to smush my ink over into one spot so that I can get a better inking here. And then I am going to give it a little test. Okay, not bad. All right, so I'm going to stamp this just a little bit away from the right-hand side because I am going to trim um, my right-hand side into like a little banner. All right, so I'll just clean up my bone folder. There we go. Put away my ink. And we've got a few options for trimming this. You can use your paper snips or you can use your banners pick a punch. And so just pop this in and voila. Now, hmm, I'm actually gonna trim that one more time because I want it just a little bit closer to my words. There we go. All right, so that Banners Pick a Punch is really, really handy. Um, otherwise, you can just use paper snips and trim it into a little flag like that. Now, on my original, I had actually glued that straight down, but I think that I would actually like to pop it up. So I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of my sentiment. And peel those off. Now I'm going to place this just below like that. And then I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back of this circle, but I'm gonna make sure to avoid that spot where it's going to overlap there. So I'm just gonna go at the bottom and the other side and then up to the top. Okay, that's gonna be more than enough to hold this in place. All right, so with that done, I am going to line that up, pop that down, and then we just finish this by adding some embellishments. Now, I did have them out, but it looks like I was trying to be tidy and I cleaned up my whole desk. All right, so I am using the In Color um, Opal Rounds. And so that's what we're using actually on all of our cards today. So for this one, I'm going to use the Soft Succulent. You could also go a little bit darker and um, do that, but I've actually used up all my small ones um, of my Evening Evergreen. So we're gonna go with Soft Succulent for this card. Oh, these are being tricky, not wanting to lift up. There we go. Come on. Oh, they're not normally this tricky. Here we go, and one more. Thanks. Oh, that one left its adhesive behind. Thanks. Okay, come on. I have to coax them off the sheet today. <laughs> All right, so 
we've got that one done with all of our embellishments on there. So just a sweet little St. Patrick's Day card, or, you know, even just good luck, like if somebody's applying for a job or something, um, give them a little boost of encouragement. So yeah, that's our first one. Put those off to the side. And our second card is probably our most intricate card of the day. Um, it's really not that much, <laughs> but it's a really, really pretty um, friend card. And then I did put a sentiment on the inside from our um, set, Sending Support stamp set. So I put Sending Loving Thoughts and Prayers on the inside of this card. Um, so that's where we've kind of brought in our free celebration item. And so all the bits that you need to create this one are also in your envelope. Um, you'll get enough stuff to make two of this card. So before I bring out all the bits, I'm going to start with the messy part of this card. I'm actually going to move the card out of the way as well. Um, hello, it just says Facebook user, so I'm not sure who's saying hi, but thanks for joining me today. All right, so with just this one piece of cardstock here and nothing else on my desktop to get messy, I'm grabbing a dark Blackberry Bliss blend. And I am going to just splatter this piece of cardstock with my blend. Okay, and you can do as much or as little as you want just to give it a little bit of texture in the background there. Um, now, if you don't have blends and you still want to do this, you can also use a very small amount of water and use your Blackberry Bliss ink. It'll just create a slightly different speckled look though. Okay, so you can see now why I wanted to move that because I've got speckles everywhere. Um, <laughs> that's okay. <clears throat> So we've got that done. Now I can bring back all my other card pieces and we can start creating. So we can take our strip of designer series paper. So we've got a solid side or the pattern side. I'm going to use the pattern side for mine. And we're just going to glue that directly to this piece that we just speckled. So that's just, you know, a little fun trick that you can use to kind of zhuzh up a card instead of having a plain background or needing to emboss or anything. Um, all right, so now I'm looking at this and seeing that my designer series paper is just slightly smaller than my cardstock piece. It happens sometimes. Um, so once I've got that, oh, actually it's not. Once I really fiddled that into place. Okay, it's gonna say I'll go trim it, but it's actually not gonna be a problem. Perfect. Okay, so with that on there, I'm going to take another piece of elegant trim. This time it is the silver. So you get a two pack, two rolls of trim in there, one silver, one gold. So for this card, we're going to use our silver. And I'm just gonna wrap this around. There we go. And I'm tying my knot right where the designer series paper meets the speckled paper. Okay. And if it's not exactly where they meet, you can always just scooch it over a bit. All right. So with that done, we are going to tie a little bow here. Oh, come on. So two little bunny ears and wrap them around. And then once we've got that where we want it and the size that we want it, we can use some snips to trim this up. Now, one other thing that we can do, but I won't do it yet, is we could actually use a mini glue dot behind that bow to make sure it sits the way we want it to sit as well. But first of all, we have another piece to add to this before we start tying things down like that. All right. So... With that created, we can actually attach this to our card front now. So I'm gonna grab my 
Rich Razzleberry card base. And I'm going to glue a piece of basic white cardstock to the front of my card. There we go. And so I haven't done anything to this. I haven't embossed it or anything. It's just a straight up piece of white. Which is going to contrast nicely with our speckled piece that we're going to add onto there using dimensionals. Oops, I've got a stray string. So you guys get the view of the clean spot on my desk. All around me is crafting stuff. <laughs> All right, so peel these off. And here we go. So you want to center this on your card front. Voila. And now I think, oh no, we still need to glue one more time, so I won't put that away just yet. All right, so now let's get some more pieces out of our way before we attach this piece to the inside. Now I'm I am totally the person, I will admit, I stamped mine after I glued it inside, but that's, you know, not for the faint of heart. So you're going to choose one of these beautiful sentiments to stamp on the inside of your card. Um, I think I might, oh, I think I might do Sending Loving Thoughts and Prayers again, just because that one's just a very almost generic you could use it for really any occasion where you wanted to just reach out to someone um, it doesn't have to necessarily be a sympathy card so um, i am going to do that so i've got my rich razzleberry ink ink that one up and make sure that we are centered here there we go and while I've got my Rich Razzleberry ink, I am also going to stamp um, the small double ginkgo branch in there. So we'll just pop that onto a block. Ink that up with our Rich Razzleberry. Now, it does stamp a bit differently because the stamp itself creates all that like texture and um, shading and everything right into um, right into the ink so it's really beautiful okay so with that done we can glue that to the inside of our card now and we can also before I put away this ink we can stamp those double branches onto our envelope because whenever possible I Oops, that's my sample. Here we go. Let's get the one that I am creating right now. Oh, somehow I managed to get a mini glue dot in there. Okay. So there we go. We've got that glued to the inside of our card. Now I'm going to grab my envelope and stamp those little ginkgo branches right onto my envelope as well. There we go. So now we have the matching envelope. Now, our next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually grab a blending brush and I am going to use one of my smaller, new small mini brushes. And we're just gonna grab some of this Rich Raspberry ink and then very gently go over this die cut. So this is die cut with the largest die in the Ginkgo Branch set. And we're just gonna add color to the whole thing. You can add as much or as little as you'd like. I tried to kind of do a bit darker on the solid pieces and just let it be light on the the open pieces. There we go. So you can make it dark by coming in with fresh ink or just by applying a lot more 
ink to those pieces. Right, just blending over them a lot more. Okay, so there we have our piece all decorated. And you can ink that up as much or as little as you would like. Put our brush back into our holder. Hi, Lila. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the ginkgo branches are gorgeous. All right, so now these are really easy to attach because we have these larger pieces. And so I'm going to actually use some regular size dimensionals and some minis. Um, I'm going to use minis down there. Um, but they are quite a big space, so we're not really struggling to squeeze adhesives into here. This is very, very easy to attach. It's my kind of die because I often forget to use my adhesive sheets. If you did want this flat onto your card, you absolutely could die cut this with adhesive sheets and it would work beautifully. Um, all right, so we're going to attach this to our card front. So this is why we didn't use a mini glue dot yet on our ribbon, because I wanted to be able to put that right down underneath my ribbon. And then I want to make sure all my branches are on my card on that little piece that we speckled. All right. So now that that's done, I actually don't even feel like we really need to. Um, but I do like it when it sits a little bit back. So yeah, I am going to grab a mini glue dot and use that behind my ribbon. Again, right behind the knot. So I want my knot to sit there. And so I've put it there and I'm gonna use it to help just hold it so it's sitting at the angle I wanted it at. All right, so now we still have a few more things to do on this card. We have our friend sentiment here to add in. Now the friend comes from our ginkgo branch. We've used a sending support sentiment on the inside, but for the outside, we're going to use the friend. So I'll grab a little block here. Now I am going to use my embossing buddy on this because this is a dark color, so any extra embossing powder is really going to be visible on this one. Then I'm going to grab my Versamark. And I'm trying to center that and I'm looking at the top of the D and the bottom of the F to make sure that they stay on the paper. There we go. So you cannot see that because it's clear ink, but I have stamped the word friend on there. Now, because this is so tiny, I'm gonna pick it up with my reverse tweezers and I'm actually running it through silver embossing powder. So you'll have to excuse my tray. It's a little bit messy um, and almost out, but I'm going to run that through my silver embossing powder, tap off any excess. Oh, there's a lot of excess. Okay, and then we can also just use our fingers, and I'm going to grab actually a little paint brush to help remove some of this excess stuff as well. So the paintbrush, the tweezers, everything comes in your um, Stampin' Additions or Embossing Additions kit, as well as that tray with the Powder Pal that I have my embossing powder in. Most people take it out and like move it around, but um, I'm a bit lazy, so I just have a tray for my two favorites, my silver and my white. All right, now we're going to use our heat tool to heat this up. beautiful um a beautiful little embossed piece here oh i know the inking on here does look pretty doesn't it um funny enough i actually was playing with that reverse image piece you'll see it on um maybe on sun i think it's sunday morning i'm going to be doing um my celebration sunday video and it actually involves that technique um so i am going to trim this just a little bit more a little bit larger than 
I wanted it to be. So I'm going to use paper sets and just snip the ends. You could do it on an angle if you wanted. I kept mine quite boxy. And then we're just going to attach it there. So I'm just using a little bit of dry adhesive, not across the whole thing, but just on that one right hand side. And I just wanted it to hang off a little bit just to draw attention to it. Um, and then we finish this card up by bringing in our opal rounds again. And this time I am using our fresh freesia opal rounds that are all seeming to be really sticky today. Weird. Okay, there we go. And, oops, come on. Oh my goodness. There we go. All right, so, which I don't like that one there. It's too hidden. Um, come on off. Nope. Oh, darn it. I managed to get it off, but without its adhesive. So I'll have to put a mini glue dot on the back of that. We'll remove this mini glue dot. <laughs> and we'll try again. We'll grab one more. And I'm going to put that there. It's a little bit more visible. All right. So there we have our second card created. So this one's definitely kind of like the fanciest card in the set. It's nothing hard. It's just a lot of steps. So just kind of taking it slow and doing one thing at a time. And then, of course, the inside. So it's just really, you know, um, although I don't love it making, I don't love needing to make um, sympathy cards and cards for when people are having a tough time. I really love making really beautiful ones for when I do have to share that kind of card with friends. Um, all right. And then our last card, this is our time saving card. This one is so quick and easy. It's ridiculous. Um, we have got here just a quick thinking of you. And really, like, you could do anything here. In fact, I might not even stamp a thinking of you on this one. I might grab a stamp set from another um, another set and just make this a happy birthday. Like, this could be any occasion. Just change up what you put there. Now, this one definitely is um, a thinking of you because on the inside, I stamped some days are harder than others. Hope today is one of the easier ones. Um so this one's definitely a thinking of you, but we can honestly change it up and make it anything. So we've got a basic white card base. You can stamp whatever you want on the inside. We've got a piece of that gorgeous Calypso Core Pretty Prints Designer Series paper, and we're just gluing it straight down. Nothing fancy. And you can choose, like, oh my gosh, both sides are so pretty. I don't even know which side to use. I might actually... Hmm. I think I'm actually going to put the prints showing this time. I, it's so hard to choose. <laughs> they really are pretty prints. So we're going to do it this way this time. Change it up a bit. All right. So with that glued down, we're going to grab our rectangle that we have, our white rectangle. Now, this one's really fun. Oh, good morning, Danielle. This one's really fun. It's not a plain rectangle. This is our deckled rectangles. And so this is, um, you get just a whole set of these really fun kind of jagged edge rectangles. So it's really easy to create that look really quickly. Um, so we are going to actually use our, um, what's the name of it? Um, Stamparatus. Oh my gosh. We're going to use our Stamparatus to do this one because um, it's a bigger image and I just always am worried with bigger images that I'm not going to stamp them fully and then I've ruined my piece. So um, sorry, I've got all sorts of markings on this piece of paper for different projects I've been working on. But the easiest way to do this is to put your paper down and just see when you kind of half close it, where does it land? How does it look? Do you like it? Oh, that magnet's so strong though. We'll put the magnet on once we're happy with where we've got it positioned. 
Okay, that's too far back, but still. Awesome. All right, so I'm happy with where that is. I'm going to put my magnet on somewhere where my stamped image won't hit it. All right, and now we're ready to ink this up. So I'm going to grab my Calypso Coral ink. And it's very hard to use paper when you want to use both sides. Yeah. So, and that pretty Prince paper. Oh my gosh, it's like. Trying to decide which color and which print to use is like so challenging. Um, this is all gorgeous. All right, so we got that inked up with our Calypso Coral, and then I'm literally just closing this. And there we go, beautiful. Okay, so that's all done, and then we turn it around. <laughs> I could have stamped it the way I wanted it stamped, but it was already on here for another project in this direction. So um, we're all good. So we've got that done. With that done, we're going to stamp our sentiment on here. Um, now I'm using clips of color for that as well. And I just put that away. So you can choose really any of these sentiments. Um, so sending hope and peace, thinking of you with sympathy, friend, whatever you want, or any of your sending support, or go ahead and grab a birthday, like whatever, um, whatever your needs are for cards and all of that. So I think I am going to do sending hope and peace. Oh, no, I'm going to stick with the thinking of you on this one. It's just nice and open can be used for anything thinking of you and clips of coral right on there and then for this one guys you either have to grab an extra piece of white cardstock or you have to be brave and um we're going to stamp right on the inside so let's see oh where did that one go oh there it is um so we've got our some days are harder than others. And then move that out of the way. Open up my card. So some days are harder than others. And then mm -hmm. we've got the, I hope this is one of the easier ones. And I'm going to be a lazy stamper. And put this on the back side. Hope today is one of the easier ones. There we go. So that's the inside of our cart all stamped. Now we could also grab this guy, clean him up, and stamp him inside and on our envelope. Which actually, I think is a great idea. I didn't do that before. So clean him up. Get that rich raspberry off of there. And come on in with some Calypso Coral our inside and our envelope. There we go. So we've got those all done and now we just are going to finish up the front of our card. Now I'm not putting this straight on yet. There's one more little thing I'm going to do to it. I'm going to grab a blending brush, my Calypso Coral ink, and I am just very lightly going around the edges and inking them up so that they have a slight Calypso Coral tinge to them. Okay, it's just creating a tiny little Calypso Coral shadow on the front of our card. Okay. Nothing crazy. Okay. Just ever so slightly getting that little orange tinge on there. All right. Oh, good morning, Nancy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this Kinko branch set is really unbelievably beautiful. And I kind of feel like a fraud using it because it's not me making this card beautiful. It is literally the stamp set on the paper. Just do 
all of the work. Um, I'm not doing anything. Um, so those are my favorite kinds of stamp sets, these watercolory ones that make you look like the most amazing artist when all you've done is clunked some ink onto a paper. Um, it's perfect. So here we go. I'm going to put that onto our card front. So pretty. And then I am going to grab my opal rounds again. And now, oddly enough, the ones that I liked the most with this, I had originally thought I would end up using the pale papaya ones, but they're too yellow for my liking. So I actually used the um, fresh freesia ones a second time, and they're just light enough in color that they take on a little bit of the orange of the Calypso Coral. And um, they, they just look so beautiful with the Calypso Coral. I was a little bit surprised, but that's how it went. So there we go. Just throw a few little opal rounds on there. And our third card is done. So this one really is so fast and yet so pretty. Um, so a great one, you know, even if you just needed to make like a whole bunch of thank you cards and put thank you here, this makes for a very fast, very easy card to create. Um, so I'll just bring in all three of the cards from today so you can see what we can do. Well, just some of what we can do, not everything, but some of what we can do with this gorgeous ginkgo branch set. And then, of course, pairing it up with the beautiful sentiments from the sending support um so that's our card class to go for this week so if you place an order with me um before sunday night um you will get the make and takes to make two of each of these cards and then with a 70 dollars order i'll actually throw in a pack of the opal rounds into your order um, so before you guys go, I also wanted to just let you know that today is February 1st. We're halfway through celebration and Stampin' Up! has actually added on some new, um, celebration items. And so I've got here, I'm just going to share with you, um, let's see, I make it big. There we go. Share with you guys. This is our flyer for the more to celebrate. So these are some of the things that have been added in that you guys get um, get to choose from. So there's the kindness cards kit, the let's party treat packaging, um, the frayed ribbon, which I can show you guys in person, like up close in, um, in a moment. And you actually get two spools of it, which is insane. The essentials tag punch, the songbird builder punch, he's so cute. The Into the Clouds embossing folder, which I've used a lot. I love mine. Um, the Hive 3D embossing folder, which is so beautiful. And oh my gosh, if you pair that up with that Queen Bee stamp set, oh, gorgeous. The loveliest layers decorative masks that are also in our new mini. Um, and then the Enjoy the Journey designer series paper, which of course I love. I'm doing a stamp camp with it this Saturday. And then finally, the Eden's Garden Bundle for a $120 value. So, like, they've added in a ton of $60 value items to redeem. I can't even believe, like, some of these. It's brand new stuff in the mini, and it's gorgeous, you guys. Um, so, here, let me switch back to my desktop, and I'll just bring in some of those items. So, this is the frayed... Um, white ribbon is actually not really white. It's more of a vanilla, which is kind of nice. Like if you see it beside white, it's not quite the same. Um, so it's a really, it's not like that offensively bright white. Um, it's a really nice one, especially for, you know, softer um, cards and pairing up with soft succulent and stuff. A gorgeous, gorgeous ribbon. Those two embossing folders. I've used this one a lot with the um, adorable owls. And so really, really nice embossing folders. And then that Enjoy the Journey Designer Series paper. It's the one that goes with like the hiking set. But honestly, this paper just on its own, um, it has one side is all like patterns and one side is all 
um, like these beautiful mountain scenes and sunsets and stuff like that. So like wild colors and um, so this is a freebie now, guys, with a $6 order. Oh, yeah, the nice clouds page and the waves. And then the other sides are all like fun patterns. Um, just really fun, bright stuff. Gorgeous stars. So it's a really nice designer series pack. Um, actually, oh, I've got a card right here use, using most of it. Um, so, yeah, just really beautiful, beautiful paper. Um, so yeah, those are some of our new additions as well as all the old stuff from what I've heard, nothing has sold out yet in celebration. So you can still get, um, you can still get all the other offerings that are in that celebration catalog, but they always like to kind of mix it up because some people, I might be one of them, um, tend to order a lot. And so I've already got all of the free celebration things and I don't need you know, two of a stamp set. Um, I must admit I've gotten a lot of the paper, um, but it's really nice to have this new offering. I didn't have that essentials tag punch yet, so it just went on my order this morning. Um, so yeah, that's happening. Celebrations on until the 28th, so if you want to place an order, you get this card class um, from me and um, also your celebration items and everything. So just don't forget to use my host code or contact me directly if you need any help with that. And um, also let me know if you're interested in learning more about joining my team. We've had a bunch of people join because it's a great time. You get $225 worth of free product for just $175. And that includes also getting a mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. Um, so it's a smoking deal. And then you get things like this um, PDF tutorial for this card class for free as part of my team. I post them weekly on our Facebook group and um, also some other benefits, some larger crafty collaborations, tutorials, team meetings, and um, support if you want to run a business or inspiration if you want to just get a great deal on stamps. Um, yeah, so ask me more about that as well. I'd ha love to have you join our team. And um, if anybody who has just joined our team is watching, thank you. Um, welcome to our team, and we're so happy to have you here. All right. So you guys have a great day. I'll be live again, maybe tomorrow night. And fingers crossed, I've had this thank you um, kit sitting beside me and I've been dying to find time to create with it with you guys. So hopefully tomorrow night, I'll be live doing that thank you kit. And um, otherwise, for sure, Sunday morning for my celebration Sunday series. And I'll be doing one more um, Ginkgo Branch card using the sending support stamp set with it. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.